Dorm. Ladies and gentlemen, school is in session. Prepare yourselves for the school of Croc. Good morning, Crocodilies. You know, Cameraman Dan's voice is so powerful, but it can't overpower the Gatorland Express. I tried. Which, which decided to come by right when we were starting this one. So good morning, Crocodilies. Got a lot of positive feedback from our first two School of Croc days this week. This is the Florida Spring Break Edition, and we're happy to be with you guys. Now, today is called... What is it called? Capybara craziness? Crazy, crazy for capybaras. Cap crazy for capybara. So today we're gonna show you guys some more new animals we have here at Gatorland and you guys are gonna fall in love with them because everybody falls in love with them with maybe one exception. <laughs> That's me. Huh? That's me. You don't, wait, you don't love the capybaras? I do love them because I love all animals, but they drool a lot. Anyways, I'm gonna have Danielle from our animal care department tell you guys all about them. So come with me, cameraman Dan. Right. I'm gonna bring my voice down a little bit because I don't wanna sketch them out. And these are two new animals we've gotten since the original School of Croc. You guys are gonna love them. They've been getting lots of press here in the state of Florida, all over the news. I wanna introduce you guys to Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry. Oh, how do we get in? Oh. Okay, go ahead, cameraman Dan, you go first. Yeah, I'm going. Very quiet. Oh, oh my god. Very quietly as they kick everything. <laughs> it's like a little what? China shop. Hey Danielle, how's it going? Hi everybody. What do you got there? So I have Jerry right here and he is one of our two capybara babies. Oh my goodness. And look, he is chowing down on some romaine lettuce right now. And these guys, they're big right now, as you can see, but they're really gonna about triple in size. They're only about nine months old right now. Wait. Triple in size? Triple in size. I mean, they probably weigh about 35-ish pounds, but they can get up to about 100 pounds. Oh my gosh. It's a giant guinea pig, essentially. So, you can so get it's these, a rodent, right? It's a rodent. Look at these teeth. Can you get those teeth right there? Look at, look at those rodent teeth right there. Oh Whoa. my goodness. I know, huge teeth in the front, just like rats have or guinea pigs. And they have molars in the back for chewing their food. But this is for ripping up that vegetation. You can see him, he'll pull right at it there. Oh, rip it up. Now, Danielle, where do capybara come from? So these guys, where are you going? These guys are from South America. South America, and they are widely abundant down there. And they are the largest rodent in the entire world. Like Whoa. I said, reaching up to about 100 pounds. So it's a 100 pound guinea pig. 100 pounds? 100 pounds. Oh my goodness. And think about a 100 pound dog and how much how big that looks. Now, which one is that, Ben or Jerry? So this one right here, I believe, is Jerry. And then we have Ben back here behind me. They're getting really hard to tell apart sometimes. So we kind of go by the shape of the ears there. And how did we get them? Who did we get them from, Daniel? So we got these guys from Amazing Animals, Inc. over in St. Cloud, an awesome little animal sanctuary uh, that does a lot of education and conservation with animals. And we are very thankful to have these guys as friends. And uh, that's where we got these guys from. Come here. You know, I want to see. All right. So, uh, Tanil right. wants to know how many babies they have at a time. So, they can have up to, generally, on average, about three. But they can have up to five, six babies at a time. Oh, wow. Man, Gosh. look at you. You just got people feeding you grapes. Like I know. You're some kind of ancient king. Seriously. That's awesome. Now, is there is there any sort of lore or legends about capybara? I know I didn't prepare for that question, but I was just thinking it because he said kings. Like, uh, what? Like, do people have them in South America as pets, or are they just wild, or how does that work? Because they're they look kind of like a dog, but a drooly dog. I mean, so these guys, what they're known for is being as friendly as they are. I don't know if you guys have ever seen different videos of them, but they will literally be laying up on the banks with turtles, ducks, geese, all kinds of different wildlife. Um, I'm sure people do have them as pets because they are extremely gentle and docile, very friendly and social. Um, but people actually um, hunt these guys. They hunt them uh, for to eat, even which is kind of sad, but they like their fattiness and they'll actually use that for like oils uh, in, in their food for cooking. Mm. Oops, Whoa. that's my fault. Now you scared him off know, talking I about eating them, Danielle. I know. <laughs> oh. I'm just trying to give nope. some cool facts. But Nobody's it's the, gonna eat you. Nobody is gonna eat Ben and Jerry oh. here. Well, I mean, we're feeding them with grapes off of a vine. That's definitely Come on. I mean, I eat Ben and Jerry's like when I get home. 
You, like, well, yeah, yeah, Ben and Jerry's like, you know, ice cream. Like the ones with the pretzels in yes, it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. Guys. Cookies and cream. Here, mm -hmm. get that great. I think they heard what I said earlier about the drooling, and then they're, they're snobbing. Well, and snobbing I said people me. eat them, and then they were like, what? Thought we were in a petting zoo. I've seen Brandon drool on occasion. You're still friends with him. <laughs> so, just saying. Sorry, Brandon. I'm just and kidding. These guys, they're really cool. Obviously, they're like one of the cutest animals in the entire world, but they have webbed feet. Webbed feet, kind of like a duck. What? But they are, they love water. They swim, they dive under the water. I mean, have you ever seen a hippo swim underwater? They're giant furry hippos in a way. Um, they absolutely love the water. They spend probably 70% of their life in the water swimming. They're very, hey! they well, don't look like they would be, but they're very graceful like a dolphin under the water. So I'm trying to get in without scaring them so we can hey, see snatchy. those webbed feet. So they have a little bit of a platypus thing going on where there's a bunch of like yeah. mixes of animal traits in there. Huh? <laughs> they really are. Yeah, they're a little like smorgasbord. So they of got a little bit of hippo. They got some duck feet. They're, they're giant like a guinea rat. pigs. And they have to constantly chew on things and eat foods that are a little harder. Or we even give them these big logs in the back because rodents' teeth grow their entire life. So if they didn't have something to naturally Whoa. grind them down, then their teeth would overgrow. So they're constantly chewing and eating to keep those teeth ground down. Oh, really? Wow. Well, what look at him. He's frisky. Well, we got the, I got <laughs> He's that. having fun. What was that? Wow. Is he playing? He's ha that's him playing. He gets frisky, he jumps in the air, he'll puff up. He's having a good time. <laughs> so if they don't grind their teeth down, they'll just get big. They'll just keep long, growing long and teeth. growing and growing. So um, that's why we give them certain things to chew on to grind those teeth down. Just like rats and rodents, they constantly have to have something uh, like calcium blocks or even pumice stone to be able to grind those teeth down. Heather wants drool? to know if their look, noses look. are soft. See oh, the, I see the drool. Yeah. See the green drool? Oh, yeah, you see it? And it stains so bad. Um, but their nose, yes, it feels like velvet. It does? Yes, oh, it is very soft. You. What's their fur like? It looks kind of coarse. It is. is. It, it is pretty coarse. Um, so it's not Here, soft like a in. puppy or a kitten. Well, you hold it and they'll come to you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What we got? Look. Oh my goodness, I'm feeding a capybara. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just fed that capybara. No problem. Now, because Look we are that. gator land and we do love our furry friends, we also have another animal to show you guys today that I think you'll be really interested in and it'll be an interesting transition to see who loves what. Um, we're going to have Scott come in right now and Scott's going to go right over there, I think is the best spot probably. And I'm gonna I'm gonna distract these guys so Scott doesn't get bit. Um, see if you can go here, Scott. Ooh, quick or, question: While Scott's getting into place, the, the Isaiah, who always has great questions, wants to know: Are they faster on land or in the water? Oh, they can run really fast, but I'm gonna have to go with much faster in the water. Mm -hmm. That's why they have this coarse hair. And it allows that water to kind of like roll right off of them so the water doesn't weigh them down. They don't absorb that water on their fur. So they're designed pretty good. Very wow, fast. they feel like a Brillo pad. Yeah, I exfoliate with them sometimes. <laughs> My hair feels like a Brillo pad. <laughs> now, so they do come from South America, but we also have another animal here this morning that comes from South America. And because we are gator land and we don't just love our fuzzy friends, we love our reptile friends too. Scott's gonna come over here and show you guys what eats capybara? Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, so uh, Savannah and I ha are supposed to have a deal when she warns me ahead of time when there's snakes going to be involved. And uh, all she told me was we we're doing capybaras at the petting zoo. So I did not think I would be dealing with a snake today. So, so tell us what you got there, Scott. Uh, so this is Duchess. Duchess is a yellow anaconda. She's a smaller cousin version of the green anaconda, which is the largest, heaviest uh, species of snake in the world. Now these guys are from South America. They are a water boa, so they do love to go and cruise through the water, just like the capybara. Now their colorations are like a dark yellow to a high yellow with black spots all along their body. Oh. And so tell them the difference between a boa and like a python when it comes to how they lay eggs or have live birth. So with boa species, they have live birth. So all the babies develop inside of the egg and when they're ready to come out, they hatch inside of the snake and then they come out already ready to go. Now with pythons, pythons actually lay eggs and then stay around the eggs and help them hatch. Here, step back a little bit and we're going to try to get this guy in the lights. So really get a good look at him. Let's see. You can see it. They have a really vibrant cool color. iridescence. All right, What's this her isn't name, so bad. Scott? Duchess. Duchess. Now we have two of these guys here, Duke and Duchess. So 
So let's mm. do a quick poll in the School of Croc, because I'm interested to find out. It, uh, if, you're, if you're in the School of Croc right now, and you like the capybara, uh, put a post that says capybara. And if you like the anaconda better, put a post in there that says anaconda. So I'm interested to know how many School of Croc kids are interested in the mammals versus the reptiles. Oh. And that way we can do a better School of Croc for you guys later on. Uh, Reba wants to know uh, if the anaconda could get large enough to eat someone. Oh, there's a squirrel back there. Hey, squirrel. Um, yeah, they can potentially reach up to 14 feet and about 200 pounds. Now, the green anaconda, yes, most definitely has been reported to have eaten somebody. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But we don't yeah. know for sure. We just, we, you know, the and internet. You, you let me get all close up like that and everything, <laughs> Scott. Thanks a lot. Oh, he's a little guy. He's crawling all over you, so I guess you're okay. So another interesting thing about anacondas, and Scott could probably tell you better, is when an anaconda bites you because they're not a, they're not, well, they can constrict, but they're not necessarily a constrictor. They, they have uh, in their, in their spit, I don't know what the other word is. Saliva. saliva <laughs> they have an anticoagulant. So when they bite you, it just keeps bleeding. It doesn't stop, like if you get a bite from another kind of snake. Yep, and they have about 110 teeth in their mouth, and they're curved backwards. So once they lock on, they get you good. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. All right, well, thanks for that. Do we have any more questions in there, cameraman Dan? Uh, I, you know, I'm trying to count who's saying they like anacondas versus capybaras, okay. and it's impossible. It, I just keep anaconda, anaconda, capybara, capybara. So well, we're going to have to tally this up after the show. Danielle is definitely team capybara, I would have to say. And yep. me and me and Scott, well, cameraman Dan, you're probably team capybara. Oh, yeah. Me and Scott, <laughs> we're team anaconda. Okay. It's even a cooler name, team anaconda. Yeah. Team anaconda. Speaking of cool, like, look at this guy's look. He's just got the hat there with the teeth and the sunglasses, and it's like look, Dan, pretty look dang cool. Drool. What? Look at the drool. Oh, oh. You scared him. I scared him. Look at how that drool. What's the drool from? It's, well, so they're eating, right? Right. And they have to create that saliva to be able to start the digestion process and the process of their food. Um, but it really moistens up a lot of food, especially dry barks and things that they would eat. It uh -huh. helps really moisten it up before they, they swallow it. But this is romaine lettuce, so it's full of moisture. Uh -huh. So they can't, it's really not so much their saliva rather than the juice coming from the lettuce. That's what I look like when I eat tacos. Yeah? Yeah. I believe it. I just drool and... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I look like when I eat tacos. <laughs> so ask us some more questions or give us a tally. What have we got so I, far? I, it's really back and forth, but you know, um, the UK agrees with me about the snakes. Like they're like, no, nope. I see a few people in the UK. Nope, no to snakes. Absolutely <laughs> not. I had somebody just ask um, the anticoagulant properties in their bite. Does does that wear off? Yeah, it wears off eventually, but. Initially, that's what it is. And I don't know if you guys can see the little squirrel running around back there. There is a brave squirrel that is <laughs> not worried about the fact that there's an anaconda here. So Danielle has changed teams. She's now Team Squirrel. Uh, cameraman Dan, I guess you're on your own with Team Capybara, and me and Scott are Team Anaconda. That's right. In a way, the squirrels and the cappies are related. They're both rodents. Well, yeah. yeah They're both rodents. Right. That's true. We need to introduce everybody in School of Croc to Jeremy the squirrel. They, yeah, uh, you're right. Um, Becky point. wants to know how long do cappies live? These guys can live up past 20 years old. 20? Mm -hmm. Wow. Generally, the typical lifespan is about 10. Okay. But they can definitely live up to about 20 years old. Uh, Isaiah wants to know how long are anaconda teeth? Ooh. Depends, Depends on the size, size of the yeah. anaconda. Scott, you haven't like gotten the measuring tape and measured the teeth there. <laughs> no, <but>. no. <laughs> okay. I will tell you, when Duchess came here, I got a couple, I, I definitely got a couple quick bites from Duchess when she first came to live here. But now Scott's been working with her and she's really calm now. But, you know, again, that's not how an, a wild anaconda would behave. Uh, we work a lot with our animals here. The capybara, when they first got here, they were a little skittish. Danielle's done a great job. Uh, getting them to the part where, you know, we can actually come in here and interact with them. And, uh, you know, that's what we do here at Gatorland. We want everybody to be able to get up close and personal with our animals, learn about them, and, uh, you know, be able to spend some time. Look at those little ears. I, I got to tell you, I, I could watch them eat all day. <laughs> that's, I know. It's so that's cute. just pretty fun to watch that, you know. <laughs> So how is their hearing, Danielle? Do they hear very well? Yeah, they have they have very keen hearing for sure. 
uh, especially with different predators uh, down in South America that might be a threat to them. Uh, they use a lot of their smell and their hearing to be able to detect predators nearby. Becky Ann just asked if the Cappies are from the Fire Swamp, which is... You guys aren't going to get it because you're not geeky, nope. but that's from Princess Bride. Okay. She's comparing them to the rodents of unusual size. Oh, And yeah. I was going to say earlier, their teeth kind of look like the, the R-O-U-S's, but I was like, no one's going to know. No. Nope. But, but Becky knew. Thank you, Becky. Daniel, I mean, da cameraman Dan's so excited right now. Because, They're like, yay. Uh, <laughs> look at my squirrel. Look at my squirrel. Someone else knows joke. movie okay. references. Well, follow the squirrel. Follow the squirrel. Oh, oh, great. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, just so everyone knows, <laughs> this squirrel is also stealing the show. There's all kinds of comments that's like, future that's, that's a brave squirrel. Like everyone's saying that, <laughs> that squirrel. You know, we keep it really safe here in Gatorland. And I think all the animals, the squirrels, the raccoons, everything that lives in Gatorland, that, that doesn't belong to Gatorland, they feel very brave coming in and, and doing what they do here all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So now Heather pointed out something very important that even though I may be a little bit creeped out by the snakes like other people are, they're super important for the environment and yes. the ecosystem because yes. they're going to eat rodents and other things that, you know, you don't want too many of them running around. So thank you for that, snakes. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. What a fun Wednesday morning. So this, the squirrel that's stealing all the grapes doesn't have a name, right? She might have a name. I'm just not aware of it. Okay. Um, because this is a squirrel that often visits the petting zoo um, and gets free handouts all day long. Mm. Um, because, you know, we, we love all the animals here at Gatorland. I, I, I will say that before we started, I watched Danielle walk out of the petting zoo, find that squirrel, and get on her hands and knees and, come here, little squirrel, come here. I was feeding that squirrel grapes, and it was adorable. They they don't just love the animals that are in their care. They love every animal here. It's pretty awesome. We do. And, our, and you know, the wildlife that exists, you know, in the perimeter and that, that kind of melds here into Gatorland. Like, I saw one night when I was down with Pearl, I saw a raccoon come out, grab a snack out of the trash can, uh, and then go back and sit down and watch Pearl swim around while he <laughs> ate his trash. <laughs> Oh, just great. like a guest would. Just right, got a exactly, snack yeah. and right. went to the enclosure and watched the animals. <laughs> how do you think he learned how to do that? Yeah. I don't know. He's sitting it was in the trees watching us all day. Maybe we, we need to the charge the night. raccoons admission too. So do we have any shout outs today, cameraman Dan? We sure do. We have shout outs to Renee, Megan, Ramona, Julie in the UK, Vicky, Kathleen in DC, Sheena in Scotland, Gianna, Jameson, and Ashley, and a special shout out to Kaylee and the pre-K class at Little Hands Play School all the way in North Carolina. Yeah, oh, North Carolina. Yep. <clears throat> all right, so tomorrow, I just want to let you guys know, tomorrow we're going to be surprising you guys. Well, I guess it's not a surprise if I tell them, huh? Tomorrow we're going to be doing the School of Croc with some of our gigantic alligators here at Gatorland. Some of your favorites from the last School of Croc, some of the favorites that when you come to the park you get to see them. Feed them with Michael Brown at Adventure Hour. So we're going to do a big alligator School of Croc tomorrow and it's going to be a lot of fun. We actually have some news media coming out to be a part of that, so that should be really really exciting and i gotta get here early tomorrow to try to track down skunk ape and uh see if i can find him so. <laughs> oh yeah skunk ape might be here tomorrow yeah, yeah. that's exciting because skunk ape is my favorite and i love arguing with the skunk ape <laughs> so uh for right now do me a favor and share this with all your friends and family let everyone know that gatorland is doing a florida spring break school of croc because we really here in the state of florida would like some good press coming out of spring break as opposed to what you might Google. Uh, we, you know, Florida is a beautiful state. Our wildlife is amazing and we sure do love being a part of your lives and we love for you guys to be a part of ours. So tomorrow, big alligator day. It's gonna be great. And for now, like, share, comment, take us on home, cameraman. Oh wait, and from Scott and Duchess the Anaconda, and from Danielle and Ben and Jerry, take us on home, cameraman Dan. See you tomorrow. Same croc time, same croc channel. Bye. We love you.